thank you everybody for joining us. We're gonna we're gonna talk about so we were just talking about Ken's company Brandco can go to Vegas. Now it's it's 21 years old. And Ken, you've been helping people with helping real estate agents brand their their real estate business for 21 years now. Congratulations. We'll have a beer the next you. time over over Brandco the next time we get together. <laughs> whenever we're allowed to do that again. Yeah. Um, so guys, my name is Bob Stewart. He's Ken Granger. What we're going to do today is we're going to go through and we're going to review some websites. And so actually, as we get started here, what we would love, 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 love is let us know what your website URL is. And we're not going to get a chance to review them all, but we are actually going to go in today right now. So you can go in, throw it in chat. Hi, Samantha, go in and throw it in chat and we will we're going to review your site a little bit later. So awesome. Thanks, Ryan. Listen, um, we don't, doesn't matter if you're a brevity, if you're a brevity person, awesome. We, we, you know, we really know our way around those and what they're capable of. If you're, you know, doesn't matter where your website's with, we'll, we'll take a look at it. And we're going to start, Ken. Well, first off, Ooh. before, we, yeah, I had in here. So Ken, don't <laughs> worry. So normally, or not normally, Ken and I have done this a couple of times. And in the past, we have, um, ask you guys when you signed up for your website, which gives us a chance, Ken, to go look, find a couple, pull them up. And so this is actually going to, we're going to test our skills a little bit here because we haven't seen any of your guys' websites. You know, <laughs> a few of these that are popping in here, I have been on once or twice. I know some of your names and stuff, but, um, you know. It's so, going to be new to me for all of these. All these are new to yeah, me. So you guys are going to test our skills here. And Ken's kind of um, feverishly pulling up some of the sites and, and taking a look and seeing if we can get some good ones to kind of bring to life some of the concepts that we really want to touch on um, today. Now, one of, the, one of the things that Ben Kinney's been doing for a long time, we used to do this back at Active Rain. I mean, Ken, I don't know if you're, you're a pretty creative guy, so maybe you don't do it as much as we do, but um, R&D. And, and it's not research and, and develop it. It's rip off and duplicate. And the reason I say that is we, we <laughs> want to go look at the guys. We're going to go look at uh, Compass. <clears throat> they, they, they got funded at a you know, billion dollar plus valuation. So they got lots of money to go out and, and spend to do the research and figure out what to make my site look like so people do and act a certain way when they get there. Zillow, same thing. They've spent a lot of money over time. And I know a couple of guys on their development team, like, they, they've spent a lot of money and a lot of time and, and they really focus on, I mean, when they, when they move some little button somewhere, there's a lot of research that goes into that and A-B testing and on and on. Redfin, I have another friend that works at Redfin. He's a, a developer there. This has been a 15 year process or, you know, an overnight success for Redfin. Over 15 years, they've made their website look exactly like it looks, right? So, we're going to look at those three kind of big boys first, Ken, to kind of bring to life some of the concepts that we think are really important. And listen, yep. we know they're important, not just because these guys do it, but these guys went out and proved, proved it out, right? They've done the testing. They've spent way more money than any of us will probably ever spend on our website or even think to spend. So we'll look at, yeah, uh, exactly, Stan. Why recreate the wheel if somebody can go out there and, and kind of lead the path for us. R&D, we're doing it all day in our business. And then we just make some tweaks maybe to make it just a little bit better, right? So I don't even know how you're going to – listen, let's do this. Why don't we jump in here? And while we're kind of talking and you maybe take it all, I'll maybe find us a couple that we could look at as yeah. well. Um, before we jump in here and start looking at, at actual websites, Ken, <laughs> what are some of the, the elements – that, that we're going to kind of come across today, think about, like, just set the stage for me here as we, as we get ready to dive in. Yeah, I think one of the things that I want to avoid, and we'll see probably some examples of that today, is shiny object syndrome, where we see agents that just see something that looks cool and trendy, and they want to incorporate that into their site. And sometimes they give that so much uh, value and impact that it's distracting from the other things. And we really got to look at like, what is the purpose for these websites? And nine times out of 10, it's probably lead generation. Like, are we trying to pick up some buyers and sellers off of this thing? Or, you know, maybe we need to um, uh, validate our referrals, right? A lot, of, a lot of agents are saying, you know, I don't want internet leads, but, you know, if they're a referral only business, their potential clients that are getting, you know, their clients that are referring other people 
are going to research you. And one of the first places they're gonna to turn to is the internet to see if you're legit. So I wanna look at like shiny object syndrome, SOS. I wanna look at intent um, and really, you know, why are we, or how are we distracting our visitors from what we really want them to do? So as we're looking at some of these big boy sites um, and, you know, some of the agent sites that we're gonna be pulling up later, we gotta look at what their intent is and how do we quickly get the visitor to do what we want them to do. So I think that's the overall tone of this and anything else that we do on our website is just noise and it's distracting people from what our intentions are, whether that's capture buyers lead, a seller's lead, uh, capture referrals, build credibility or validity, those types of things. So I think if anybody's thinking about a website refresh in 2021, and by the way, if you've not updated your site in the last two years, you should be thinking about that. You need to refresh these things on a regular basis. We got to start with an intent. So in the back of your mind, like, what are we doing this for? Not to be all things to all people, but we want to increase our buyer's leads by X. We want to increase our listings by Y. Um, and we need to have some really you know, nice landing pages for our referral business. So think about that intent as you're going into a refresh for 2021. All right. Love it. So um, at, do we want to start with one of these big boys? Yeah, let's do it. You which, pick one which, and we'll, we'll just dive in. All right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share my screen, you guys, here. And it's going to be this, this monitor right here. All right. So we're going uh, to look at everybody's, you know, the, the, the people everybody loves to hate, right? Zillow. <laughs> um, the, 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 first, the first kind of player into the, the national portal game and, um, yeah. you know, the publicly traded and um <laughs> everybody's best friend <laughs> they're, they're, honestly ken i believe zillow is like this necessary evil because here's the deal if they were to do let's say all, all the portals disappeared to would be left with is one agent in every market who to assume that position right i mean somebody could really have a stranglehold and so love or hate zillow they actually give more people a chance to participate in the internet lead game kind of right because if they were to disappear you'd literally have one agent or one brokerage that just locked into that spot and the reality is it'd be redfin in many people's markets but anyway yeah um so here it is and look this i've been to zillow lots of times in the last i don't know how long they've been around now 15 years uh, 13 years um doesn't always look like this right so they're when you think <laughs> one of the things to learn from them is they are constantly refreshing, tweaking, changing, you know, whatever the, the message of the day or the market of the day is, they're, they're constantly moving into that thing. So I think the mm -hmm. first thing to learn here is this isn't what it'll look like 2007, right? Or really probably what, not even what it looked like in 2018. Yeah, probably not. A couple of years ago, I mean, they've they've actually pivoted quite a few times and over those years, and and even more so. I mean, we know Zillow as a, a search site, and we typically think about that for buyers, right? And you know, Zillow's coming in in a lot of markets where they've got you know real estate agents that are actually on their staff now, and they're coming into other markets where they're doing a like an iBuyer program where they're trying to attract sellers. But we see over the years. As Zillow is as is, is uh, morphing their brand and their their intent and their business model, their website is changing too. And I think as agents, we have to look at that at least on an annual basis and say what's what's in store for me for 2021. So if we look at Zillow here, we know that Zillow is a search portal for real estate. So the first things that we see when we get there, if we look at the upper left hand corner, we've got the buy. If we look at right smack dead in the center of the page, we've got the search for your, your home, whether that's an address, neighborhood, city, state, or zip. Um, you can get right into the search. But one of the things that they do is they tease you just a little bit before you scroll. And they're saying whether well, you're buying, you know, their number one persona as a buyer, selling or renting, we can help you move forward. So now we're starting to introduce some of the other products that Zillow has above the fold. And if we scroll down just a little bit, we'll see that we got really easy call to actions to get people where you want them to go. And I think as real estate agents, and maybe we'll see this on some of the sites that we look at, it's not really obvious what people are supposed to do when you get there. And here, if we look at Zillow, like I can identify as one of these three different personas instantly and get into the messaging that would convert me over to a lead within one click. I see um, when I look at this, like if I was a real estate agent, honestly, that right box, I don't know, I'd, spend, I'd want to spend a bunch of time in the rent a home box, but I'd just shift that out for investors, right? Like in, sure. in, in Ben Kinney's business, we talk about, look, we're going to help people buy a house, sell a house, 
or invest in a house, right? Those are our three things, our three kind of calls. So this would become investors um, here, but I, it's so clean, right? Like as you scroll down here, it's like, you know, you, you can get some places, right? And, and I think we're all used to website navigation, right? But what, what, what do you do? You're gonna, you're gonna buy a house. This is interesting because Zillow for years, people thought of them as the place I go to see what my home is worth. Right. And, and what they've done, you can, they're, you know, look guys, you guys don't have massive budgets where you're running TV ads and people are going, Oh, but Zillow, their TV stuff, it's all been around that, like finding a place, finding your home. Right. Um, they've got those very, you know, the commercials that, that tug at your heartstrings where the kids run into the house that the parents just found. And um, so you, that's the message when they're driving people to you know, go to Zillow that it, it really aligns with everything that, that Zillow's been pushing in their marketing. And he's like, you know, this photo right here is fascinating to me. Oh, yes. Um, yep. that, because I almost anybody in the United States could land here and identify one of those properties on the screen as looking like their area. For um, sure. Everybody, like the people on the call, you don't have to do, you don't have to get this creative because you could probably find one house photo or one picture that represents your area. But Zillow, they cover the United States, right? And so they had to get really creative here with that photo in order to, for me to look at this and go, oh, there's my, that's, that kind of feels like mine, right? Now they don't, don't have the big pine trees or the, the big uh, evergreen trees like we have. So that, I need an evergreen tree <laughs> in there somewhere, Ken, to maybe make me feel <laughs> in the pacific northwest but i bet you identify with those palm trees or something down there right like there's the a house. sand the palm trees yeah we've got some uh, some leaf changing color behind the one house we've got some you know brick buildings that you might find in a city like boston or new york or chicago but they you know agents need to do this too and a lot of times they'll do that with uh, rotating images on the home page and that may or may not work. Photo slideshows are terrible for bounce rates. Basically, you know, the people that come to your website and then get distracted by a squirrel and leave. Um, but agents love them. They love video too. But notice these, these websites that we're looking at, they're not using video, they're not using slideshows um, and they appeal to everybody in their market. So if you live in an area like, uh, let's use Boston, for example, you might have some vertical living. So you want to have some imagery that would appeal to those folks. You might have, you know, some brownstones that are maybe more townhome looking things, not necessarily single family with lots of land. So as you're choosing photos for your website, think about how Zillow was able to apply this across the country. You have a smaller market, but you need to be doing something similar. Um, the other thing I want to point out here, and agents will do this sometimes, they'll ask us to do it, um, and it's difficult to pull off, but Zillow's actually managed to do it, and that's having the logo in the center of their website. You know, we're typically kind of trained to have the logo over on the left. For a lot of people who are managing their own website, and they don't have a full-time IT department or developers, this idea of a logo in the middle of the navigation can be a nightmare for keeping your website and navigation up to date. If you wanna add a new item, for example, to one side or the other, it gets out of balance. Um, it, we don't recommend agents to do that unless you have a full-time design team that's that's behind you or development team that's behind you to make those things happen as your business changes. It's not very often you see one that looks good like this, right? Like, yep. Yeah, it's I, usually I, pretty crowded. And look guys, that's it, right? Like. They, they isolate you on this homepage to some, some navigation, which we're all used to, right? It's, I think, it, and, and they've spent a lot of time figuring out, look, in behind this page, there's millions of pages on Zillow, right? I, including thousands of like information type pages that we can drive to through basically those eight buttons up top, right? But the rest of it, the, I, there's something to be said for the fact that they do not have much below that that first set of calls to action right below the fold right so you've got they've got what they really want you to do you've got some stuff you could do but only three options and that's it right now there's all there's navigation down here and some stuff but the fact that zillow doesn't put anything down below that kind of second screen basically you know i would call this the second screen right it makes me realize people don't go past that that point right there Right. Because if if they knew that 25 percent of the visitors did something down below this point, and I'm sure they had something down below this point at some time. And in fact, I know they did. They would still have something down below that point. Right. What this is telling me is 
people don't go below this point. Especially when you get those nice, big, clean action. Reason for them to go beyond here. It's like, I need to buy, I need to sell, or I need to rent. Or in your case, you know, in the audience, maybe invest, right? This is- yeah. um, that's perfect and we're see, we're seeing agents do just this scroll up and probably gosh i don't even know when it was popular i'm getting old now so i forget those things but probably three or four years ago these like endless scrolling pages where you just had you know page and stack and stack and stack of content that was going on in your home page that's not relevant anymore and if your home page is three or four or five or seven scrolls you need to rethink that and reconsider that. What you're doing is you're giving people choices that they may not need. Like if they scroll to the bottom of Zillow and there's nothing else for them to do, what are they going to do? They're going to scroll back up and they're going to compartmentalize themselves into one of those three categories. So take a look at your own homepage and see, does it have too much on here? We see agents dumping neighborhoods on their homepage. And this is, I mean, neighborhoods are really important to put on your website but maybe you don't have to call out all 40 of the neighborhoods that you service on the homepage. Um, you know, those can be pages like Zillow that's just in the back of the website that you can get to um, without having it all called out right on the homepage. I, yeah, I think we, I think it's just like, you know, it, we, we want everybody to know we, we work everywhere. We know a lot, right? And so we, we got to get it all on there because if they came here and they didn't see that we had Awatuki on there, they'd think we don't, we don't service that area. We only work in Mesa, right? Um, so, it's, yep. I mean, yeah, there's a, there's, a, there's a conflict there where we, we want to show as a lot, but when you, when you really get, I think, into the data of it, which is essentially Zillow's making data-driven decisions, right? When you get into the For data, sure. but you start to realize – if we just give people simple choices, they, they like you said, they compartmentalize themselves. They, they pick one of those simple choices. It's yep. really good. There's a lot to be learned from, from looking at, at this one website. And again, they've spent a lot of money doing this, right? All right. For sure. For sure. We moved, uh, should we move to one of the maybe newer kind of folks on the yeah. block? Yeah. So Compass hasn't been around for that long, right? Um, we, we, we know some folks over there and they're smart folks, right? So they probably, they started... By, by looking around and seeing what other people were doing and, and then they've been making tweaks. What, what about Compass? Like, what about just as we land here, what speaks to you? What do you see here? Well, I think it's the intent again here. Um, it, you know, they're really trying to appeal to folks that are, um, in, in this particular case, searching for a home, right? Whether they're buying or renting, we have the options there right above the fold. Above the fold means you don't have to scroll anywhere. And we've got the same, pretty much the same function as Zillow. So we're starting to see a pattern here. The big boys that are investing thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars in their websites. If you don't have this strong call to action for property search above the fold, you're probably in a position, you know, a, a, a second class position with your website. You definitely want to have that. Now your screen's a little bit different than mine, but when I see it, I actually can see their for sale just below the fold there. And they're starting to tease you with that calling the compass exclusives. That's interesting. Scroll on more. Yeah. Do you I have different. different? Yeah. So one of the things these big guys will do is they'll A-B test sometimes um, and serve different content to different people. Um, if you don't mind, Bob, I'll share my screen real quick. Yeah, yeah. let's see what you got. And then we can see. So um, they could do this via like ge geographically, um, serve different content in different areas, or they could potentially do it um, just, you know, random visitors um, and say, you know, say, hey, let's serve, you know, 50% of the people that come to our website, this page, and 50% of the people that come to our website serve on Bob's page. And let's look at it afterwards, what actually works for us. So um, when, when Bob was sharing a screen, right below that, they had their featured properties. And I don't know about you, I don't really care who the home is listed with that I want to buy, right? Like, I don't care if it's going to be with uh, Compass or Keller Williams or a Remax. If that's the property I want to live in, that's what I'm going to go with it. So when you're showing featured properties, uh, you may be isolating people. They really don't care that it's your listing. But on my version of Compass, I'm actually seeing their, their basically their um, uh, product for selling your home, their, their listing product, right before I even scroll. So I still have the main call to action of buy or rent, but right below that is this Compass Concierge, which I kind of have a hard time with because I don't know what it means until I read. So maybe it was, you know, list with Compass would probably be a little bit easier. Why list with Compass? Um, create that question and be like, yeah, why would I want to list with Compass? And it says That's that we, help, we sell your home they, faster. They, they yeah. think Compass, they, they, they're trying to brand that phrase, Compass Concierge. But what you just, 
let them know is I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Yeah. yeah so I have a split second decision to decide, do I want to read more about this based on just reading compass concierge? And my brain goes, I don't know that move on. Right. Yep. That's, yep. that's fascinating. So in this case, I mean, they're talking about what they're going to do this. I mean, this is kind of strange. They said they'll, they'll sell, help you sell your home faster and for more, more money by covering the cost of home improvement services, no upfront fees or interest charge. Like, I mean, that is a really cool thing. There's a lot of people that, especially with this economy, they maybe really can't afford to do some rehab on their house. Compass is going to pay for it. Well, yeah, maybe I'll engage with that. But think about what percentage of your visitors would actually, this message would actually resonate with. Probably a relatively small percent. It might not be worth it to serve this type of message to everybody coming to your website. Or maybe they cookied me and figured out that I needed rehab on my house. I don't know. But somehow they're giving a different message to me than they are to you. And I think that creating a more clear message is going to give you a better uh, uh, stickiness of your website and certainly is going to help your lead capture. You know, the, the, this, like this thing right here, you know, go back, pull that back up. Yeah. That I, it feels thrown together to me a little bit. Did that look at that picture like that? I think that photo right there, like I can barely see after concierge down there. Yeah. But that, that could have really <laughs> brought that thing to life, right? If I could have really clearly looked at that image, and by the way, the images don't even really fit, right? You could, the left image has all that light in the background, so you can't really tell that the windows, it's supposed to be like this one continual shot of the room, but because they, the photos don't match up very well, it, it feels thrown together. They could have, like that, that image could have really brought to life instantly for me what Compass Concierge was if it yeah. was done a little bit better, I think. Right, I can't see the after the before and after doesn't jump off there to me, and the photos don't really match up the way they should to give me a better sense of like, oh, okay, that's what this is in one like in one instance they could have delivered that message to me, but instead I kind of got to go wait what oh okay I get it and then read and um so that yeah you can they they are definitely a b testing here you can tell like they they this this is probably not their normal thing. They've thrown this up here at you to try to see if how people bite on it. That's interesting. Yeah, that's a really good point about this image. And I've seen, uh, you've probably seen these too on the web where they've got this like nice little JavaScript slider where on a before yeah. and after you can slide and actually oh, see yeah. the whole room before and the whole room after. You can yeah. do some really cool stuff. If that was your stick and that was what you were investing in your business that you do these rehabs, Make it successful, man. Put some, you know, invest in it. Make it look really good. Um, otherwise, I think you're just wasting time and 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 you're you're ruining the opportunity with a potential visitor. Now, if you've got a ridiculous budget, like you know these big boys, Compass, Redfin, uh, Zillow have, they can blow you know a hundred thousand visits and whatever advertising budget they're using to test this stuff. But for the average agent, you can't. So you got to be really intentional about what your um, what your goals are and what you, where you want to bring these people to your website because every visit counts, every dollar in marketing counts. We don't have the budgets to you know to spend all this money like some of these other companies do. All right, so um, you know the, the when, we, when we first land there on Compass, it's it's a very similar kind of baseline uh, for Zillow. I, they they're diverging a little bit because they are they're running some testing, right? And I actually. Um, wait, are we sure? What, what, oh, hold on, I might have hit the wrong screen there. Sorry. Uh, let me try this again, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. All right. Th this, uh, I, you know, I can, I've never really thought about what you just said there around displaying like these listed by compass. And, and it's our agents come to us all the time. And they, 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 they got to get their listings on the homepage because maybe they told their seller, hey, we're going to market your property on on the homepage of our website. But when you said like, when the buyer lands there, they don't care about your listings. Like they want the listings. Um, wow, that was actually a really big aha for me. Um, my brain's now running through, okay, now what do I tell my <laughs> seller? It's gonna tell them it's gonna be on the homepage of my website. I gotta tell them like, the best properties are gonna be there cause I wanna attract the best buyers. Then when I get the best buyers there, I'll show them your house. Um, so it's just a little bit different. That's, that's a the great script, but you know, it comes back to intent, Bob, like you, if, if you have a referral only business and you're really not trying to attract those buyer leads, maybe that's okay. 
but it comes back to intent. And you cannot be all things to all people on this one little homepage. You really have to think and be purposeful about what's going to be above the fold. So it depends on your business. If you are a sell a, a listing focused business and you're driving referrals and you really want to work with listing and maybe you have some buyers agents and you capture those leads as they come through, that's great. If the intent of your website is not to capture buyers leads, you might be okay with it. All right. Let's, uh, let's move on to, to the next guy. And this could be another one, I think, where you might be seeing something different than me. I don't know. Red, Redfin is constantly doing tweaks. Um, their website can look different from week to week. But this is um, a little bit surprising to me that they kind of split the fold, right? I mean, um, honestly, it's a little bit off-putting to me. What, what, what is your just initial thoughts right as you look at this thing? That's interesting that it's off-putting to you. I found it really clear that like sell your home your way with Redfin and then sell your home for more than the home next door. I thought that was really curious, but I thought the call to action, so it was really consistent with the call to actions about selling the home. But if I'm a buyer, that first box that you type there says find a home. So it's a little inconsistent or incongruent with what they want you to do, the messaging there. Um, but I really liked if that top call to action, if I were making a suggestion to them, the top call to action was about the sale or the buyers and the bottom call to action sell for more. You've got them both right there above the fold. If I'm a buyer, I know where to go. If I'm a seller, I know where to go. It's right there. I kind of like it. Why do you think, why were you off? Well, I just, Tell me a little bit about that. I, I Okay, so- this is when I start to realize I might have a polluted look at, at a lot of stuff. You know, we look at like a lot of the brevity. I'm just pulling these things. There's some examples of some folks that threw in there. These are brevity. These are brevity sites, right? Um, you look at Zillow when, when we land here and you look at, at compass when we land there, the fact that they like this line right here being higher kind of, you know, it's what it's a, uh, 45% up the page. It just throws my eyes off. And that could be, cause again, I have like, you know, my, 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 my vision is polluted by having seen a consistent <laughs> look over and over again. And maybe real estate consumers don't, you know, they don't see as many websites as, as our eyes see. It, that just feels strange to me. I wish it, I wish that top picture, it wasn't so stark, right? It's just like top, beautiful top photo, bang, white, white space. That just looks a little bit off to me. That, that, I, I would agree a million percent. And I would probably challenge that it does exactly what we want it to do is compartmentalize and separate those people, right? So instead of you're clicking around on those little call to actions there, there are some people that maybe are not really, um, they're not gonna read, right? They're not gonna go to find a home, sell a home. They're not gonna bother with that. They're gonna just be this quick, you know, three tenths of a second scan through the page. And if they don't see what they're looking for, it's not gonna capture their attention. And I think with that stark and drastic difference, it does that exact same thing. Or that exact scroll purpose. down, I like the way they kind of, you know, the calls to action move from left to right back here, right? Um, again, in, in similar to the Zillow deal, it's like they, they I like the way those stacks theirs up, by the way, kind of one, two, three, here's your options. And they're, they're kind of laid out yeah. here. It's sell. So they're, they're putting them in a priority order, right? This is their priority. This is what they want you to do. They want you to sell. That's the first thing they want you to do. Then they want you to, uh, you know, Whatever. <laughs> so, no, again. <laughs> and then they want you to like like on a drip campaign or something because you're not going to sell now but you want to get kept up to date on the market right so um but again not not a million things on here not not 50 neighborhood pages not you know look and can't do that right they're, they're all over the country so they, they, yep. they can't do that but if if they if it made sense to they'd figure out a way to right? They'd have some kind of navigation up here that allowed you to search a certain community or something. They've kind of said that's, that's not as important. People come to this, these sites, do a couple things. They want to sell their house. They want to know how much it's worth. They want to, they want to find a home, right? That is a, a fascinating sell your home with red, your way with Redfin and then, but then search. Um, yeah. You know, you can tell there. They, 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 they're, uh, they're definitely the, option it's surprising to me that their home page doesn't start by with like the home value um route right given that yeah. everything else on here is about selling except for that one box so yeah it's, it's incongruent 
It's good. Well, it's good. and I'll say this too, you know, it, neighborhood pages, I, I don't want to like um, put anybody, the perception out there that neighborhood pages are not important because I think they're critically important. However, they're more long tail search. If somebody types into Google the neighborhood, that person that's visiting would land on that page. This is not coming in from the homepage having all those neighborhood pages there. And I'll tell you, we've probably launched 1500 websites with neighborhood blocks, just, you know, all the neighborhoods there. It's just not valuable anymore. And two or three years ago, it may have been super important. Today, it's not. Um, and yes, absolutely. Redfin could geo-target you and say, okay, listen, you're in, you're in Seattle. I'm in Orlando. Let me pop Orlando neighborhoods on his website. And let me pop Seattle neighborhoods on, on Bob's website. They just don't. So there's a reason why they don't. And I think that we're finding that the faster we can get somebody to a search, all these search bars are smart enough now when you start typing a neighborhood, boom, they they put a you know the the polygon around the neighborhood and all you're seeing is properties in that particular neighborhood. Can I ask you, so they're they're a brokerage, right? Which is a little wow, well, Zillow's a brokerage <laughs> too. But <laughs> they have a phone number up there at the top. What do what do you how do you feel about like your phone number being right there front and center? It's like it's not necessarily like, like it's not like eye grabbing on here, but it's really easy for me to find. Like, what what's your opinion on on what they did right there with the phone number? I like it. I think that your your contact information should be really easy to find. Um, I would like it better if it was in the upper right hand corner because that's kind of where we're, we're conditioned to find it. Um, but I think it being there is really important. And it, does it stay when you scroll down, or does it actually scroll all the way up? No, it, yeah, it, it, leaves, it doesn't. So, you know, okay. Get a shot at it right at the beginning, but yeah, yeah, that's that's curious. I like it. Um, I don't think I don't think you could ever harm your business by putting a phone number there. What you could do is harm your business is if you don't answer the phone, your voicemail is full, or you've not put a custom voicemail message on there, and it's just the standard. You know, you have reached one, two, three, four, five. Leave a message after the beep. Uh, so that could harm your business. I call a lot of I call a lot of real estate agents over the course yeah. of, a, of a given month. Let's say I. I'm shocked how many times I get a computer generated voice saying you've reached, you know, two, five, three, seven, eight, nine, three, five, seven, eight. I'm like, yeah. what? I'm a, I always think I have the wrong number. Like every single time that yeah. happens to me, I look at my phone, I look at the number. I'm like, nope, that's right. Wow. That's crazy. Um, yeah. That's shocking. <laughs> the only uh, other thing I want to point out here, and I didn't click it because I don't have this on my screen. You've got a feed with a four next to it. That makes me super curious. What is that? There you go. I don't know. They uh, want me to. They want me to. All right, let's just do it. Are you going to do it? No, oh, they win. <laughs> <laughs> See how easy they made it, though. They won. <laughs> they made it so easy. Um, I, so let's just. I mean, we can probably explain what just happened there. I know that we we've got a short hour here, but um, that basically created a lead capture right there by having that sign in with Facebook, sign in with uh, G Google, and I forget what the other one was there. But basically now uh, Redfin has all of Bob's contact information in his Google profile and every website visit activity prior to today and from this point forward has been now tracked and associated with Bob. So he's got some sort of price range here. It looks like between maybe seven fifty dollars and a million dollars going on there. And as he starts clicking on things, we're going to see that, okay, Bob's looking at all the homes that are between eight hundred and nine hundred thousand. dollars what are they going to send you in the email next week? Homes between 800 and I'm actually 000. really, um, I mean, I have Redfin's app on my phone. I don't know. I must, I think I'm logged in. I think on the Redfin app, I use my, the Facebook login that I just used right there. So I think they just pulled it all together right away saying, oh, here, here's that guy now on his computer. He, had, he normally uses the app. And these are the types of houses that my wife and I have been looking at recently around here. So, I mean, they've, they're doing work here at Redfin. Like they, <laughs> it was good work. Like they just put it all together. But that that I wasn't logged in. That four up there was like a that was a a dopamine hit that my brain needed. Right? They're like, hey, we, you got a message up here, and I'm like, message? What message? Right? Because we're all trained now to like, you know, Pavlov's dog every time our phone beeps. Right? So that's what that was. That that was a that was an interesting little little thing they had there. They, maybe they thought they knew who I was, but they weren't sure. And so they were putting that up there saying, we think we know, but just log in for us. Right. Like, and had I not sure. been somebody that they knew they would have had a new lead. Right. Right now they just have a, you know, a, a different login from, from the same lead, but it's interesting. 
Yeah, that's curious. And that's one of the things why your website and your CRM need to be talking to each other. I know that um, a lot of folks on this call are, are using Brivity, so they've got a website connect, a CRM connected website. But if your website is separate from your CRM, you got to get those integrated so that those um, that 360 degree view of your potential customer um, is transparent to you, whether that's their mobile activity, their website activity, their phone call activity, their email activity. All that's got to be in a central place so that we can serve them messages that are going to get keep them more engaged. And like like uh, Bob said, that dopamine hit, it works, man. You're, like, you're going to click on it. You're going to figure out what's waiting for me. And then now all of a sudden we've connected all these other um, activities to you. And we have a, a more holistic view of what your buying opportunities are. All right. Let's, um, well, 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 I don't know. Okay. Well, you know what? Let's just start. Let's with dive this. in. Okay, so you, so you you have some I think that you pulled up. I was just randomly grabbing them. That's um, all I could do. Yeah. Okay, so this is uh, welcome to Carolina. This is the Peter. I think this is Peter Kima, and and his group down there somewhere in North Carolina. Um, what do you see here? I mean, I see something really obvious right away, right? And I'm yeah. I'm I think we're going, going to the same, same place. That logo. Spot. Yeah. Yep, that logo's got to fix, right? So we've got a we've got a transparent logo that. Are we being politically correct or direct? I forgot to ask the group. <laughs> direct, right? Let's be direct. Yeah, we're blind. Yeah, it, it, let's just put an asterisk on here. If you gave us your website, you're giving us permission to be direct. Right? Wait, wait. If, if you be politically correct, I'll, I'll clean it up and be super blunt. So you go either way, man. Uh, <laughs> no. Um, that logo, I know you can. You're blunt, so that, go. That logo's got to go, right? So this was a really poor attempt. Either you know they did it themselves or they sent it over to Fiverr to try and get a transparent logo. Um, it's pixelated. You can't read the name of it. And especially like through screen share, like it might even make it worse, but like they forgot to drop out the O in the background of group. Like to me, I would instantly click off of this website just because of that logo. And what we're talking about is representing you're the marketing arm for my most important investment of my life. And if you can't market yourself or you don't take the care to market yourself, as you know, at the top of the line, like I'm going to be a little bit skeptical about how you're going to market my property. And I know that this is such a simple thing, but it's going to make a big impression on somebody that's visiting your website. Yeah, we could, I think we could, um, you know, the other thing about that particular logo in, in this environment here, notice, notice how much black space there is up there in that menu bar. That's because of the height of that logo. And you, you can tell, like, if you really get in there, you know, the blue line, it's that blue line around the logo that is setting the top and bottom of that bar up top. And you see the, here, let, let me, um, I'm going to see a BKT. Yeah, as you're pulling that up, I will tell you, if I had a dollar for every time an agent said, make my logo bigger, I could retire. Like, we wouldn't have to, we wouldn't have to do any more websites because everybody wants their logo to be so huge. It doesn't need to be that big, right? We're trying to get people to the call to actions. It's not as, a, it's not about the logo. This is Ben Kinney's. This is this is one of Ben Kinney's uh, team sites. This is their team in Olympia, Washington. You can see the really small logo, and and I mean they have the black on black background, so we can't really even see. Like, in fact, if you look really close there, there's not actually a navigation bar there. Like that black, it's just kind of fading into the background. But if like when you notice the difference between that and that, I mean that's like a really stark kind of, especially when you have that image right there, and then you've got that. You know, this is probably the top 15% of the page is being taken up. So maybe it's 12% of the page being taken up by that, that menu bar, right? Just the blackness of this thing. And if we had a, you know, a, 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 a logo that really was not much taller than these letters are, you know, then your, your header's not taken, it's taken up five or 7% of the top of the page. But that, that's a lot of real estate up there for that thing to be taken up. And really, if you look how much just black space is in here on the top and bottom caused by the height of that logo. Um, yep. All right. So keep, keep going. D dig in a little bit more here. Yeah. I'm just going to stay at the, at the menu where we're talking about now. Search listings. I'm not sure if that's the best way to communicate what people are looking for. So I know that it does cover things like investors. But we need to connect with our potential visitor, visitors on an emotional level. Like we need to talk to them about their home, their dream home, their family, or maybe if they are investors, they're providing for their family, right? There's a reason why they're investing in properties. So search listings is a very sterile way of communicating. Find your home. Um, and I would challenge that. 
real quick. So th- this box right here, this is our, this is the brevity kind of default yeah. learning if you use this <laughs> template. And we spent, you know, look, we, we partially are indeed, spent, but spent time thinking about like, what are these words, right? And so like Ken said, we use home, right? Find a home. That, that it, um, lengthwise, that it would actually be even shorter than search listings up here. So you'd have a little bit more room on that, that navigation. Um, find a home is probably the, right? probably the way to potentially go there if, if yeah you- for sure for sure and I, I would challenge anybody who's got a brevity site let's look at that box is that the right message i pulled up i don't know 10 or so sites and brevity 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 almost all of you have the exact same thing let's bring you home and to me that because i see it so much it's just really not that great and i know r d and maybe it works somewhere but what is your value proposition that you brings to this? What area are we in? Maybe this is how we communicate a little bit about the neighborhoods or the areas that we service. Um, and um, I like that it says bring you home where you're putting yourself out there and trying to personify you know, the, the visitor and bringing them in and helping them with their dream. Um, but like, let's get a little bit more emotional in some of those call to actions, especially if we're talking about finding homes for families. Well, everything real estate all in one place. So that's, uh, you know, that's kind of Ben's, that's their place. Deal, place thing. Right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. I mean, when, when you like, Ken, when you, uh, when you guys work with somebody and you sit down and you're going to help somebody kind of develop that brand strategy and, and really, I mean, a lot of it's going to come to life on their website. Right. But there, there's other aspects of, of doing that, but like, how do you go about figuring out how to bring, let's bring you home to life to, to give it the, the Peter Kima team feel? You know, some of it comes from what their, their purpose and their passion is and why they're doing this real estate uh, endeavor. Um, you know, Ben's got a purpose behind everything that he does with his real estate. And that's, it's, a, it's delivering the dream of homeownership everywhere. Is that yep. closer, right? No, you're yeah, right. So, like, like what, why are you doing this? What is the intent? What is the purpose? And if we can draw it out of them as a person and, and connect it to them, that's going to be much more successful than if we're just trying to throw words at a page. Um, and we start with interviewing. We have some of those conversations around, you know, what, what, what is your purpose? What is your big why? Why are we doing this? Um, how do you feel at the closing table? How many families have you helped? We start to have those conversations to bring a message out that connects to the actual agent or team. That's a, but Bob Wallsmith is like near and dear to my heart. He's like, are there, are there blog posts updated and relevant? And in this case, they yeah. are. Um, that's awesome. Right. Like Bob, my, my active rain background makes me say like, if, if you have a blog that the last blog post is six months old, like take the blog link take it off. <laughs> down from up there. Right. So that's a, a really smart commentary, Bob Wallsmith. Like, what do I see when I actually drill into some of these and we're, you know, we can't drill into every link and, in any of these websites but yeah if the last blog post had been from july of 2020 it's either time to write another blog post or or yeah. five right or it's time to to stop marketing that as a as something that that people are going to find value in uh for sure love it yeah so he's he's, you know, he's cool he's, they, it looks like every couple weeks here. he's got something going there yeah that's yeah. awesome good yeah, the sim rate, but you're right on. T- Peter's like, no, no, look at the top. I'm like, I know, I know, you did it. You had one from yesterday, man. You blogged yesterday. That's fantastic. <laughs> um, oh, and it looks like maybe there was a CSS problem when the first time I loaded it because his logo is showing better here now. It's not oh, a, white, a black is. header or white. Right, so or somebody jumped in there and changed the color. Yeah, somebody's working in the background on the white. You're saying, no, 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 look at the menu bar. Yes. So, um, well, kudos still, to you. It doesn't look It's still tall, bad. man. It's yeah. still tall. One of the things to maybe, I don't know, there's, there's something there that, that's still a little bit, that it's, it's a little challenging, right? And, mm-hmm. and what, what happens sometimes is like you work around the low, like when you're not a professional designer, Ken, you know this, when you're not a professional designer, you have some element like this logo, for example, I think is the element we're working around here. And you, you got to force something around that element. Right. Yeah. So what we're doing is we're forcing this tall, this tall portion of the page, right? The, the header bar, we're forcing it around here because we got to work with that logo because we're, we're not a design professional that could take this thing and adjust it, do something like, 
you know, Josiah is able to do here and, and, and kind of black the picture up to the top. Right. And now that we've black, if you look really close in here, guys, you can't even, I can barely, but if you look really close, there's photo behind those words, search listing and home value. So, you know, a, a gradient, I think it's called gradient. If, if you had a grade gradient on this photo where it darkened up towards the top, you could have these being white, not even have this header image here. And then we could, you know, potentially fit that white version logo in there. So it's, it's challenging when you're not a professional designer, you're working, you know, you're just trying to work with what you got, right? Which by the way, is me, anything I've ever designed kind of has that just not quite finished feel to it, right? <laughs> you know, a lot of times people were saying, we, you mentioned earlier, we've been doing this for 21 years. Uh, when Wix and, and Squarespace and all these other builders came out, they said, well, what's going to happen to your business? And th there's value in those, even the Brivity Builder to a certain degree. Um, there's a lot of value in those tools for a do-it-yourself type uh, website. But there's always that kind of polish and that le next level that a lot of people just can't get to with those builders. And to your point, you know, there's some some image editing and finesse that you can do that can just go from a you know a, a C or a B level website all the way up to a A. And I would suggest for Kima, since we were picking on you a little bit earlier on the logo, if you want to shrink that size, just take the circle badge off. We'll still get the exact same impact, but you can make that image probably 60 or 70 pixels smaller. And then that's going to reduce the amount of your navigation bar. So I think that you could do that quite easily. Um, and we'll help you with that if you need some help shrinking that logo down there and getting that's rid of the, such a, the badge. So it's such a smart comment. Like, holy cow. You can tell Ken's been doing this for a while. I never would have thought to. Yeah, it's... it's Look, I don't know if that maybe that's his color. That blue is part of his color, and so he's trying to get that blue color in there or something. Uh, make the house blue instead. I don't know, um, but yeah, I don't. I don't know how much it's adding to the, you know, the the logo itself, right? It's really just right. kind of just framing right. it a little bit. But all right, you, do you got one over there that you want to pull up? Um, I like not really. So if you've got another one, let's see. Let me click through here. All right, let's, let's do this see what one. We got. I got, let's now, bring you home everywhere. Sometimes, All right, let's see. Um, sometimes I don't even know if there are sites or not. I can tell, I guess, if I came down here. Is this a, a Brevity site? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so this is a Brevity site. You, there's a lot of flexibility. These things can look, you know, there's a similar look and feel, but talk mm -hmm. to me about this one. What do we see here? Um, so I'm looking at, and I'm... <laughs> I'm looking at this as with a critical eye. If I were just a visitor, the first thing that comes to my attention is this real estate you can trust and this slideshow in the background. Um, I love the fact that we have families. I love the fact that we have them in front of homes and living their lives and they're happy and all those types of things. I hate that there's a slideshow here because that's going to be distracting to me. Let's just refresh that image every time the page loads, a different image comes up. If it's something that you really can't decide on which image you want to be. Um, but you know, critically looking at this, Life Hopes Home Team. Um, I don't know exactly what this means, so I don't know if Hopes is the last name. But if this is truly about hopes and dreams and, and you know hopes in your life, like let's play that up a little bit. Let's have a little bit more engagement with that. And instead of saying real estate you can trust, you could say you know let us deliver the home of your dreams, or um, you know hoping hoping for a new home, or you know something along those lines. Let's play off of that a little bit to connect those things together. Um, the other thing is those two call to actions. I got start your search and talk to an expert. That search bar up top, I didn't really see it until I you know, did a second glance there. We'll notice in all the other examples that we were looking at with Zillow and Redfin and Trulia, that search bar is, is in the image, there's contrast around it, and it's really isolated to be that, uh, to grab your attention. And here I totally lose it. The, 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 I think on Kima's website, it, like, and look, we, we do the same thing on the place stuff. I like find my contact information. I guess we can slide it out here. There's a lot, like there's a lot going on on the, one of these place sites and guys, these are ours, right? Like we'll, we'll we can eat our own dog food here and, and uh, be, you know, put a critical eye towards our own design. I guess I'd hit connect if I wanted to find a way to call these guys. Mm, yeah. Um, I like, I just want to call you sometimes. Right. But again, that this comes down to, we're going to get back to uh, the life hope site here. This comes down to like, well, what's the point here, right? Um, so her, her, her point here is around helping them buy, right? It's like, you know, even though it's, it's not super 
you know, takes a second glance to maybe catch it. It's, it's a buy call to action. It's a buy call to action, right? I, th- this is an interesting one to me. Um, I just, I want to sell a call to action on here. Like I'm, I'm just, a, uh, <laughs> I'm a whore for seller leads. I'm a, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll do anything for a seller lead out here today. Right. Like we want to help people sell houses. Buyers are, a, I got to take them in my car and drive them around and you know, I can handle 10 times as many sellers. So that what's that sell call to action here. And look, for all I know, she has an entirely different site dedicated to, um, to selling, right? Like, you know, Ben has, and let me, um, I'll, I'll do this. You know, we, we, we have sites dedicated towards buyers, right? And so like, this is a, is more of a buyer. Oops. And I went off to the contact page. Let me get back to the homepage. Look, there's some seller calls to actions on this, on this page, right? Sell my yeah. home, finance a home, but the, the find a home is the main one right now. And as I land there as a default, I'm saying, hey, I'm, I'm looking for buyers. Okay. Um, I like that. We should definitely change this to find a home, find a place, maybe even for these guys, right? Find That'd a be home. cool. Yeah. Uh, but this is his seller. This is one of Ben's seller websites. Everything on this screen, sell your house, right? Get a marketing plan, see your home's value, sell your home. Like there's four calls to action here. Three of them are, are sell your house. So when we're driving we're doing seller marketing when he does um, he does radio advertising or we send postcards out and, and we use a quickly code to drive sellers somewhere. We are driving them to this page. Right. And then we're and now look below the fold. You know, we know what makes your home sell, sell my home, see your home value. Like the calls to action are always around that thing. We want them to do get a free discreet seller consultation. Um, here's our pricing strategy, right? See your home value. By the way, we're never missing an opportunity to try to get somebody to, to, to <laughs> get deeper into the web, right? Um, so I just, I wonder, or if, like, I, I wish, maybe I don't wonder, I wish that I could, you know, no, I, I could come up here and there's a selling yeah. call to action here. But let's say I did want to get, oh, there's the home value call to action. Okay, but, you know, there's, there's a, ooh, that's no good. Smart um, there's a little bit of... You know, it's, it's not kind of all in one place necessarily. This it's not it's not bad though, right? Again, the imagery is really good here. The uh, maybe we could we could tie these two things. I just I'm screaming for a phone number. I want to see a phone number on somebody's website. I think a yeah, lot I would of say that, that that's a that's a big takeaway from all of this. If you don't have your phone number in the header of your website, and maybe even an email or contact us button there. Um, it should be really clear how to get in touch with you. The place that you just spoke of, it was difficult to find. Um, this particular website says who we are. There's not a real good call to action for what the phone number is. Just put it in the upper right-hand corner. If you go to Pizza Hut and you want to order a pizza, you're going to be looking for it there. If you're, you know, you're calling a plumber, you're going to be looking for it there. It should be in the upper right-hand corner where you expect it to be. The, uh, I, I think the second place I would probably look is down towards the very bottom of the page. Yeah especially if I didn't see some navigation that said, you know, connect with us or something like that, or contact us or something in the navigation. Right. Because look, um, life hopes homes. You, you guys may have, if, if you've got started to build a, when you start to build a brand in your area, a lot of people that hit your website are just trying to get, find you and get a hold of you. Right. Yeah. Like they literally went to Google and were like, where's the life hopes homes team. And then they, they Googled that and they landed on your site and they're like, I don't want to call them. Like, how the heck do I call them? <laughs> Who we are? Is that where I'd call them from? Um, yeah. Well, I guess. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. But, but I got to know. I got to know to get there. Um, yeah. You know, maybe we consider making it easier for them. Let's, uh, there's actually one. This, this is a non brevity site. Tell, tell me your first impressions of, of this site here. Uh, uh, first impressions, first time seeing it, super busy. Um, This is kind of an old school search. So it makes me wonder when this website was built. Um, and again, I see these every day. So I'm, I'm kind of putting a little bit more critical eye to that. Um, newer webs, you know, newer searches, you don't see this on Zillow anymore. You see this kind of uh, min price, max price, bedrooms, bathrooms. You see that on an interior page. You see that in advanced filters after you get a search started. Uh, very rarely do we see this type of search anymore. So it instantly makes me question how old the site is. Um, 
the uh, there's like two navigations going on here. So we've got this home about me contact reviews. That's actually nice to have those, but it's separate from the main navigation. And we've got the phone number in the upper right-hand corner, which I love, but we've got social media icons. Listen, your social media is to drive people here. You have a Facebook page to get people to your lead capture. You have Twitter and Instagram to get people to your lead capture. You do that to get them to your website. Don't take them back out. Like, why would you put that on your navigation so that they could go click on Facebook and watch cat videos, right? Like we've got them where we wanted them and now we're sending them out. So I would, I would ditch that. You can um, do it. I mean, you could do those buttons, but you do them on like a connect with us page or something, right? right? Some other right. page where they're like, how can I learn more about these guys? Not as like a gateway, like you said, off of your website from the homepage. And, yeah, and it could scary. be the, the really concerning part about that for me would be if that is a persistent navigation, yeah, it doesn't matter where in my site they go, they've got yeah. this exit point, right? This gateway off to cat videos. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that's scary. Um, I love they got the accessibility widget there. That's pretty cool. If you have not looked at website accessibility, that's probably something that you do want to look at. Um, so that's Wait, what, nice. Accessibility widget, what are you talking about? Uh, that little, I think that's the accessibility widget, the little man in the upper right-hand corner. Oh, this guy. What is that? Oh, yeah. It is, yeah. Widget. So it helps like yeah. somebody that might be visually impaired or have some challenges navigating your website, get through your site a little bit better. Um, so uh, yeah, that that's distracting to me. I noticed when you clicked on buying that that navigation or that uh, search bar stayed there. So that's taking up a ton of our space. What happens if you go to selling or, or locations? Does it stay? Yep. It does. Super distracting. Super distracting. Um, so I would probably reduce that. We're taking up half the page on every single page with those things. Um, and it might work for a visitor that's getting to that page for the first time, but somebody that's navigating from the homepage, that could be really distracting. Um, let's see. I like these. I mean, I do like these kind of, this is a la Zillow style, right? These like kind of really crystal clear calls to action here. Um, yeah. Those are, those are good and strong. The, there, there, there are, they, I think about levels. Like if you look at Zillow, there are, there's one, two, maybe a third level here to this, to this site, right? When we look at Compass, there's, there's kind of, there's really almost only two levels. There's like navigation level, this level. I, yeah. mean, I might call that a third level down here. It kind of gives you an idea. There's something else down there. She's got, oh, uh, there's, there's gotta be, there's, there's that, that, that one, two, three, four, five. There's like six levels here. That's why it feels busy, Ken, right? There's yeah. like six levels above the fold here, even, um, you know, and then, and then as we get down here, like, active is look, look you know it's funny um because I, I i a lot of people do this they want to have their listings on the home page maybe you just don't call them my listings right <laughs> maybe you just say featured listings or something or, or you say you know the listings right and and people think when the, the buyer thinks when they land there this is all the listings but you can still turn around and tell the seller i got your listing on the home page of my website but you're not like calling them some like compass is calling these their listings Right, this is listed yep. by Compass, and I'm like, well, what about the other stuff? Is this is this all the houses? And look, a certain part, portion of the consumers, they don't know, they don't know any better. They're just like, whatever. But some people are like, where's the other stuff? Right, where's the Windermere <laughs> and the John L. Scott stuff? Like, I gotta find yep. that. This maybe isn't the place for me if they're just showing me their stuff. For sure, uh, for sure. All right, let's do let's do one more. Well, how much time? Yeah, let's do one more, and then we're, we'll actually. You know what? You told me you have a hard stop in three minutes, my friend. Um, I do, yeah. Okay, so. Here's yeah. what we'll do. I know, so I, I know that there's a lot of folks and, and literally I think there were probably 50 websites that were put in the channel there. Um, why don't we do this? We will do a one-on-one -on -one website audit and review for anybody who wants to schedule an appointment to do that. Um, there's no charge, there's no obligation. I saw Bob popped in there a little bit and said that we did one with him last time. We did this earlier this year. Um, we will do those. There's, like I said, no charge or obligation just to have this one-on-one -on -one with you and your website, 15, 30 minutes, maybe 45 if we're going long um, to have a conversation about your site. If you'd like to get an audit for your site, text the word audit, A-U-D-I-T to 59559. And what that'll do is it'll send you a link back to our calendar. 
so that you can um, basically, you know, pick a time that works in your schedule. Um, book that for about 30 minutes, 59559, text the word audit there, and we'll do this one-on-one -on -one with your live site. Um, you know, we'll, we'll either be politically correct if you need a little bit of kid gloves, or we'll just go at it and tell you what we think's wrong and what you should work on. Um, and then hopefully that'll give you a good plan to get a good start on your website for 2021. All right, guys. So what you're going to do, you're going to pull your cell phone out. Half of you guys have probably been playing around on it on Facebook and watching cat videos while we've been going through here. But pull your cell phone out. You're going to send a, a message to the number 59559. So who's getting the message? 59559. And then the body of the message is going to put the word audit. Fire that in there. Ken will send you back a link to their calendar. You guys can jump on there at a time that's convenient for you. And they will. Ken, do me a favor. This group can take it, my friend. This group. Yes wants the honesty they don't want kid gloves so you I'm got it there, you guys i'm just kidding they've got somebody over there that will give you uh the kid glove version if that's what you ask for but ask for it up front um, otherwise, <laughs> by default we we give the blunt assessment all right ken Perfect. thanks buddy i appreciate you doing these with me man absolutely it's a lot of fun i appreciate you we'll have you back again soon enough you guys have an awesome what's today wednesday have a great rest of your week he's ken i'm bob on behalf of samantha and mikey who help us get you guys here have an awesome day, everybody. Bye-bye.